Okay, so welcome back. Uh, long series today. So this is a continuation of the details of the New York law, and I would like to uh, start out here making a couple points. One, that uh, we have crossed an important threshold in human technological, medicinal technological development in that we can now perform open heart surgeries, spina bifida corrections, um, uh, organ transplants that I'm aware of as early as 19 weeks and I've read at least a couple of situations where in rare cases babies have even survived outside the womb um, just past the 20 week threshold and there, I listened to a doctor the other day in a video it's important to note that if we're performing operations on a fetus inside the womb to, to make heart and spine corrections and things like that, we're operating on a separate patient. Okay, that's an incredibly important detail of this to remember. We're not having these operations on some clump of cancerous tumor cells. Okay, anyways. I would like to discuss some of the facets of the changes of this bill. Point number one, New York claims, Governor Cuomo claims that this is simply a measure to protect Roe v. Wade in case big bad conservative majority Supreme Court now takes up some Roe v. Wade case and uh, overturns your right to an abortion. Okay, first of all, first point, there is no such thing as a constitutionally guaranteed right to an abortion. If you can find the word abortion anywhere in the Constitution and present that to me, I'll get on one knee and apologize in case you butt. Okay, so second part of this is let's actually assume the legal structures involved constitutionally, mind you. If Roe v. Wade did not exist, would abortion be illegal? No, it would not. Because as the 10th Amendment, the original Bill of Rights instructs, uh, any laws not settled uh, federally are left up to the states. Roe v. Wade, should it be overturned, would not abolish legality of abortion. It would not do that, okay? That's not true. So, let's go through the law. Previous New York Penal Law, Article 125, outlawed references to abortion and insert a health exception into the newly written public health law. Such a health exception has been broadly interpreted by the courts Doe v. Barton, four, I'm sorry, Doe v. Bolton, 410 U.S. 179 in 1973 to include age, economic, social, and emotional factors. What that means in layman's terms is that the woman can choose, it by New York law, when removing this penal code uh, for any reason, anything can be considered an emotional factor, okay? Uh, it does not have to do with her health uh, should she want to choose to end the life of a beating heart human baby at any point during that pregnancy, up until the day of birth, okay? So, second part, um, as I mentioned in the previous discussion, New York citation, uh, more than 2,000 abortions after 20 weeks. New York leads the way in abortions in the country, surpassing California by only a few. The next part of this legislation that I'd like to discuss. This legislation specifically reverses the protections of licensing in terms of uh, who can perform an abortion, okay? You no longer have to be a licensed, uh, experienced, trained doctor to perform this, uh, this abortion in the state of New York after the reversal of this uh, code. Title VIII of the Education Law, I'll get back to that, the Education Law says that uh, any health practitioner is now authorized. And if you're certified under Title VIII, that includes nurse practitioners, physician's assistants, and midwives, as well as other non-physicians, okay? That gives, this bill gives the Education Department, 
not the American Medical Association, not a doctor's network, the Education Department of New York, the legality to authorize any of these non-doctors to do both chemical and surgical abortions. Is that really what we want? Are we, are we promoting, if, if we're going to accept abortion at certain stages, are we promoting by this um, people who we know good and well may be uh, less safe options to administer these procedures, which will take the, the heartbeat from a human life, okay? Is that a good thing? Is that a positive thing for the outcomes for women? Are, are we going to encourage less practiced hands to uh, operate on women in, in life and death situations? Okay. It also, this law, this is the really the most ridiculous part of this. Okay. This legislation removes the current penal law protections for pregnant women in cases of coerced or unwanted abortion. Penal law sections 125.05, 125.40, and 125.45. What this does, it eliminates the ability of the state to add further charges to men or other humans that go about intentionally harming, physically abusing a woman for the purpose of causing a, an unnatural miscarriage. Okay, the example that's cited here from New York is last month a man in G Gansvoort, New York uh, was arrested for punching a woman in the stomach trying to cause her miscarriage. Okay, you can no longer in the state of New York after the passage of this bill apply further charges to this womanizer, this man who's abusing this woman physically, physically violent towards this woman um, for causing the injurious harm uh, or miscarriage to this baby, okay? Even if you're not concerned about promoting the, uh, the legality in terms of the baby itself, would you not want to apply the harshest penalty possible for a man abusing a woman physically? That seems very anti-woman to me. I'm just saying. Okay? So, Section 2 of this bill then proposes a new public health law, Section 2599-AA2, would obtain, ordain abortion as a fundamental right. What this does is it compels doctors, midwives, health practitioners that may not want to perform the abortion due to either a religious or a conscientious objection uh, for whatever reason. The state now says that you have to perform this abortion if the woman wants it. The state's physicians, uh, if you work for the state, you may not uh, opt out of performing this task regardless of your opinion. So what you're going to do is you're going to, uh, if you refuse, you're going to lose licenses, you're going to lose fees, you're going to lose the ability to pr practice medicine and help women in, in other regards. Uh, you're punishing the people that are there to provide better health related outcomes to human beings by compelling them. And state compulsion has historically not been a very good thing. Um, I can cite all manner of uh, socialistic, communistic compulsion mechanisms administered by the state in various countries around the world, and, and I can cite the, the results of those things. Okay. Um, it also removes section 4164, removes the full legal protection for a child that is inadvertently born alive during the inducing of an abortion. So if this baby comes out alive, you can go full Kermit Gosnell and it's perfectly legal to uh, not attempt to keep that baby alive. Even if it was born alive, you, the state has removed the protections um, of that child in these circumstances. You can let that child lay there until it dies. You can cut off its uh, head, dismember it, what have you. And uh, those protections are now removed. There's nothing positive about this law. Okay. 
There's nothing positive about uh, shouting your abortion. There's nothing positive about promoting uh, the ending of the most vulnerable lives that we have in our species. All right. Realize this is a tough conversation. Anyways, hope you follow along. I uh, hope you do some of your own research. Again, feel free to question and comment. All right. Have a great day.